Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And today I'm taking you through three of my favorite lighting setups. We're gonna do a one light, a two light, and a three light setup that can all be used in studio and work great for you on your photo shoots. Now I'm doing it in my home because of quarantine, but I think we're gonna make this work. So the first thing we're gonna start out with is just a simple one light setup. Now I'm using the Profoto B10 Plus here and I've got a large white umbrella. You could also use a big Octabox, but the big point is use a large modifier that I like to use, a, has a circular shape. I like to use a circular shape because it creates a nice um, circular reflection in the eye, which feels more natural when you're looking at a photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up until the bottom of the modifier is between mouth and eye level. Now that is just kind of my starting point. And then I take this and angle it down. Now as you angle it down, the modifier gets higher. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna put it about 45 degrees off of where my model would be. So right now I'm looking at this modifier and it's about right. Now the last piece of this, and our typical idea when we think about lights is to aim them straight at the model. But what I like to do is pick about an arm's length in front of me and aim the light, the center of the light, at that spot right there. Now what that does is means that that hot part of the light, that center part of the light, isn't gonna hit the model directly in the face. What's gonna happen is this softer part of the light, this feathered part of the light, so we call it feathering, is gonna hit the model. And when that feathered part of the light hits the model, it's gonna be nice and soft all the way across the face. You're not gonna have this hard, punchy light and then really dark fall off on one side or the other. You're gonna have a nice, soft light that goes evenly across the face, still creates depth, still has contour, but feels nice to the eye. Now, this is a pretty simple setup, but if you wanna take this to the next level, the next thing you can do is enter a V-flat. Now, this is a V-flat world V-flat. And I love these things because they are easier to transport. But essentially you can do this with any piece of black or white foam core. But if I take this and sneak this in here, and I'm gonna turn this modeling lamp on. If I sneak this in here, I wanna bring this as close to the model as possible without being in the frame. So this dark side is called a flag, and what that does is it's gonna bring some of the light out of this side of the image. It feels weird to say that, but essentially what it's doing is it's sucking all the light out because it's black. It's not reflecting anything, it's not allowing anything to reflect on this side of the face. So you have a nice light side of the face, and then you're gonna have a little bit more contrast and a little bit more darkness on the opposite side of the face. Or, you can flip this around, and use the white side of a V-flat or a white V-flat and do the exact same thing. What that's gonna do is bounce light back into the face. So you're gonna have more even lighting across the entire face. Now you can uh, add or take away light by moving this further from the model or bringing it closer to the model. So as you're looking at it and you're formulating this image in your head, always think about this as being a whole other light source. But these are awesome tools that you can use to take one light and make three different looks really easily. I've done this a ton of times and you guys can see some of those images right now. All right, let's move on to our second uh, lighting setup. So this is gonna be a two light setup and it's gonna be pretty similar to the one light setup with just a fill light added instead. So I'm gonna take our light that was our main light source, so this big, big modifier, and I'm gonna bring it down to about shoulder height on me. Ugh, knob didn't wanna let go. There we go. And I'm gonna have this flat. So at a 90 degree angle, and I'm gonna back this out behind where I'd be taking my photo from. I'm gonna turn this off, because typically I would do that part second. So I'm gonna turn this light on, 
and this is now gonna become my main light source. So very similar to what we just did. I'm gonna angle it down. I'm gonna bring it out to about the same position. I'm gonna bump it up to the bottom of that light source is right at my eye level. I'm gonna feather it off so it's about a fist in front of me or an arm's length in front of me. So now this is my main light source, very similar to what we just did. So what I would do while I'm building this light is I would start with this light on and take a frame and make sure this light is dialed in where I want my main light to be. Now, you have to balance these two and you balance them very carefully. So what I would do is I start with this on a very low light setting. So on these, they go up to 10, but I'll start this light setting at about three typically. It's farther away and it's a bigger light source, so it's already less light that's gonna hit, but essentially, I'm gonna start cranking images with someone standing in there, and I'm gonna slowly bring this up. I'm using the modeling lamp here so you guys can see it better, but I'm gonna slowly bring this power up until I'm just starting to see it in the frame. And what that little bit of light source is gonna do is it's gonna help craft this already great one light image into something just a little bit better and a little bit more painterly. So it starts to fill in those little shadows on the face, it starts to fill in the scene a little bit more. So you're gonna have a, a nice even light source coming from this fill light across the whole scene. And then your main light source kind of punches in there and creates a little separation on your model. This is an awesome setup. I've used it as a starting setup on almost every shoot I've done in the last year. It's a great go-to. It gets you safe images, it gets you great images, and you can see some of those right now. So that was setup number two. Now I've been using my Profoto B10s and I love these things and we've been using all Profoto modifiers but really you can use any light you wanna use. I prefer to use Profoto just because I love how much I can dial up and down my modeling lamps which come into effect sometimes when I'm in darker, t or darker scenes. And just the simplicity with which I use these lights is great. And the modifiers, I mean they call themselves the light shaping company for a reason. So. What I'm gonna do for this last setup is I'm gonna turn this light off and we're gonna set this guy aside. And we're gonna move over here. And this setup is a little bit more of a niche setup, but it's one that I've used a couple times over the last couple of years and it creates a really awesome darker image. So those last images can be really light, they can be really nice, they can be used for wedding, portrait, bridal, um, you know, kind of any real portrait scene. This setup, I use a lot more when I'm shooting athletes or if I'm trying to shoot something that's like a darker, moodier image. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of feedback on social media that you guys wanna see this lighting setup, so we're gonna jump into it. All right, so let's grab one of these B10s. And I'm gonna take this three foot octa off. And for this, I'm gonna use my beauty dish. Beauty Dish is one of my favorite modifiers. And then I like to add the Beauty Dish grid that goes inside of this. And that just gives me a little bit more control over where that light's gonna hit. It's a lot like when you roll up to a stoplight and you can only see it at a certain angle. So essentially you don't have as much spillover from that light into other parts of the image. Now I'm using a boom here, and the only reason I'm using a boom is because A, I have it, and B, it gets the light out of the way and allows me to shoot. Oh, that's too much weight, so we'll just throw it down here. But when you're using a boom, you always wanna make sure you're adding weight and being safe so it doesn't fall down on you or the model. All right, so with these three lights, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to focus on is this beauty dish. So the beauty dish is the main light for this setup. And what I do is take this and kind of sneak these two 
up on top of each other. Bring this around and set this up. There we go. Like I was saying, definitely want to use that counterbalance. All right, we're good now. As soon as I put that boom arm out just a little bit, it cantilevered on me. So for this setup, this is my main light. So I'm gonna turn these two B2s off and I'm gonna set this light up. So this would be my main and once I get this dialed in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these on and I'm using two strip boxes here. So I think they're a four foot by one foot uh, stru or a soft box from Profoto and then I have the grids in. So I've got grids on every light in this image and that's because I want it to only focus on the face. So this is my main light source. These are gonna be about one stop power less, maybe two stops power less. But essentially what I wanna do is I wanna put this on and then I wanna build these in again. So right now, this is at 5.6 power. And I know that this light is twice as powerful as these lights. So I'm already getting a stop of light just if they were set on the same set setting. And these are set to 4.5 and 4.6 power. So this right here would pretty much be ready for this setup. And I'm gonna have my model right here. And a lot of times for this setup, I'm gonna turn the modeling lamps on just so I can see it better. For this setup, I'm gonna stand here first and make sure everything looks right before I start shooting. So y'all are standing right now about where I would be, and I'll have shooting this with my medium format camera, which has an 80 millimeter lens, so a 50 millimeter lens if you're shooting with a 35 mil. But essentially these two kind of come in and angle down a little bit. And then this sits at the peak of that image. So this right here is a setup I use to create these images of Matt Hansen, of Lanny, and of a couple other people that I've shot with this before. So y'all check them out now. All right, guys, I hope that was really helpful for you. We went through three lighting setups there. We started with a one light setup, moved to a two light setup, was just kind of a nice little iteration of the one light setup with a little bit more uh, finesse to it. And then that three light setup. Now, no matter what you shoot, these setups can be awesome for you. They can be great for weddings. Even that three light setup can be awesome for shooting grooms. Or if you shoot sports and celebrity portraits like me, I use these setups on a day to day basis. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any other videos coming soon. And until next time, get out there and get shooting.